right, guys, today we're here with Jackie, one of our clients at Bachner's, and we're going to talk about her weight loss journey, what caused her to come to Bachner's, and the awesome results she's having now. So, Jackie, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for steaming the background. It looks a lot nicer. You're welcome. So, uh, just tell me about your, your background, your fitness background. You were in martial arts before. Tell me all about that. So, I was a martial artist for 12 years. I have a first degree black belt in Taekwondo. I was never athletic as a child. Uh, I was the least athletic person and least competitive person probably in my family. Um, I started taking Taekwondo to be part of a group. Um, little did I know I was joining a dojo that was very old school. You didn't speak unless you were spoken to. So old school meaning the way they train back, back in, in Okinawa, back in, like back wherever. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Much different than American. Much yeah. very different than the American version of martial arts. Um, and most likely not for women, right? The most most women two, wouldn't do it. Two women. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Um, and she, the other one was a judge, so she was tough to begin with. <laughs> and I think <laughs> with that, like the martial arts were made for men going to war, yes. right? So um, the old school of training martial arts um, is hard. Like that's how I kind of grew up. When you were like eight, people would step over you, drop medicine balls. I'm talking grown adults. So that's uh, that's yes. a. It was very yeah. very different. Very, I would say traditional in the martial arts world so again you, you didn't speak unless you were spoken to um you didn't talk during class so it wasn't really the community uh that i was expecting or the sure. group uh exercise or event that i was anticipating but i have to say i fell in love with that and i stayed for 12 years um sometimes it was a struggle and a battle to be able to balance uh, working on my master's degree and my black belt at the same time and working a full-time job. Um, but I just powered through because I really wanted to, to see the end of that, that, um, day that I received my black belt to me, that was the beginning of the journey. And that was where it all began. So life got in the way. So that's spoken like a true martial artist, right? We say the journey begins at black belt. Um, and so what are some of the things you, and how old were you when you started training in martial arts so i'm 51 now um i was 30 31 32. okay and what qualities or what did you learn from that training because the reason i say this is i know that the all of my success is predicated on the fact that i did martial arts as a kid and the stuff that i learned from that so i started as an adult which is again one of those things that you don't truly see um i would watch master toy with the children um, the, they spoke in class, they were stand up, sit down until he was, until he felt that it was appropriate for them sure. to go back to class. Um, uh, so it taught me discipline. It taught me dedication. It taught me to show up and be my best self when I got there. Um, it, anything else was not acceptable to my master. It was, you are here. If you didn't kick high enough, you're going to start over and you're going to continue to kick higher. Um, I always felt that I wasn't good enough when watching the male black belt students, um, many of them 16, 17 years old, and they could move and they could move quick. Um, I trained with Master Choice children, so these children were born kicking. Sure, sure. <laughs> so um, it was definitely an experience, but it was, a, it was the dedication, it was the commitment, and that was he truly instilled in us that you show up you bring your best self and if you don't bring your best self today you need to go to the door and come back and start over again so we trained till we were how old i trained until i was 48. okay and as we get older things change things change right so now in the martial arts you have a lot of you know when you're working out you know you have all those benefits of the martial arts now we stop that like if we stop any kind of exercise right um your body doesn't keep the level you're at you go backwards so what happens then? Do we gain weight? What's going on? It was a, the stop of martial arts. So it stopped a bit when I broke my foot. Um, I had major surgery on my foot. They told me, eh, three weeks, she'll be fine. I didn't walk for three months. Um, then I found a physical therapist who was l willing to listen to my goals, and that was to go back to martial arts. So I did that. Um, but the stop of martial arts literally was immediate, and it was my job. I could not, I couldn't get there. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't get there for class. If you weren't there, you weren't training, you weren't committed, you weren't dedicated, and that wasn't the place for you to be. Um, so the, I wouldn't say the weight gain started right away, but boy, did it start. <laughs> so 
Take me down that journey. So what happens then? So going through illness of parents, um, life change, a very demanding job. Um, and you eat when you could and on always at events. So not the best food. I mean, it's mass prepared. I mean, you can go for the salad, but what's really in the sure. dressing. So, um, so that change happened and I, I gained weight. Um, I was extremely tired. Uh, I remember sitting in my dad's hospital room and him commenting repeatedly about the, that under my eyes were very baggy. They, I had bags under my eyes. I have dark circles under my eyes. Um, I became a person that I didn't like. And so at your worst, right, for you personally, and I know you're a go-getter, right, but at your worst, what do, what do we weigh? 141 at my worst. And then when you were weighing that, how were you feeling? I was miserable. I was, I was actually, I was embarrassed. Um, my clothes were too tight. Uh, I just, I didn't feel well. Um, when I moved to Rhode Island and COVID started, I did 48 days of yoga straight, um, st started feeling better. And I think I needed that push to get me to the point where it was okay. I'm ready. There's always a reason. Um, and so that's the mental part of not feeling well. So it's not just the physical aspect of it. There's the mental part that goes along with a complete change in your physical appearance and feeling. The mental piece is as big as the, the physical. Those are some of the hidden benefits, right? right? People don't understand. If you don't work out all the time, you don't understand the, the difference in your mental headspace when you, when you have the dopamine, you're working out and feeling good about yourself. There always comes a point where someone wants to make a change because something happens, right? So what was that thing for you where you're like, I need to make a change, right? Because I talk to people all the time. Yeah, I want to, I want to lose weight. I want to do that, but they're not ready. And if you're not ready, that's okay. But I can't want this more than you want this for yourself, right? So that's the only time I can be successful. Um, so something happened, what happened? And then what, what do we do from there? So somebody made a negative comment about my appearance. Um, and I was exercising during that time, um, but nothing was changing. So I would um, do home workouts. I would do yoga via Zoom. Um, I was out walking. Nothing was changing. Nothing was moving. I sat in my doctor's office, had a conversation with him. i not losing weight. I don't feel well. I had a thyroid issue, diagnosed thyroid issue for 13 years. Um, they were saying there's from your blood work from everything and eh, your thyroid's a little off, but, but it's nothing. And I saw your ad on Facebook. Okay. So, um, the doctor for you, right. And, and this is where I see a lot of times. Were they encouraging of you losing weight or did they, did they kind of disparage it? Like <clears throat> he told me to do intermittent fasting. Um, I know for me that that's not, not a good thing because if I'm hungry, it's not pretty. So it's not good for the people I work with. <laughs> it's, right. not, it's not. It's not sustainable. And right, it's not good for people around me. I get hangry. So um, it's not good to be fit and have no friends. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you have to have both. <laughs> <laughs> so he was not. He wasn't discouraging, um, but he tried to justify or explain away the fact that nothing was changing. Um, I was getting older. Had a thyroid issue. Um, medication was a little out of whack, um, but you know, as you get older, your body changes and your metabolism changes. And that was really not only my primary care doctor, the endocrinologist. Um, this is multiple doctors multi just kind of being like all in the state of Rhode Island, yeah. <laughs> telling me that it was oh, like not that it was okay, but that it wasn't unusual. It not was, what you wanted to hear. It was not what I wanted to hear, and right. it wasn't acceptable. So I had to keep advocating and going after different i changed went to different doctors i had several conversations with you <laughs> this isn't working for this isn't working <laughs> right and so let's just talk about how important it is in, in your belief for people to be advocates for their health care right so we're talking about weight loss in, in this um you know as a physical therapist like my job is to instill confidence in my patients or even my weight loss clients right because um i think a lot of times from what I've seen from the medical community, what I say as the professional, you're gonna believe, right? Like if I'm like, hey Jackie, like you're never gonna lose weight. Or I'm like, hey Jackie, you're never gonna be able to um, bend your knee again. 
you believe that and you'd be like, Dr. Mark said that that's all I can do. Where I'm always like, I don't heal anybody. I just give you the confidence to heal yourself, right? So talk to talk to me about, um, you know, we, we got that news from the doctor, but you didn't want to take that, right? Um, which you have to be the advocate for your health, which I'm glad you did, right? So then what led you to me? Like, why did you choose this studio, you know? So I saw the ad. Um... And I think a, there was something about it that said, like, it was a guarantee. Um, there was some sort of weight loss guarantee. And I believe my first conversation with you said, I can guarantee you I will not lose weight or something of that nature. Because I had tried so many different things and I was doing the things that I knew and nothing nothing was working. Um, and so, for full transparency, it's a six-week guarantee, yes, right? Yes, and you honored that guarantee. Yeah, you didn't, we didn't hit it. We, we did, we did not. not hit it. That's like the only time someone's ever followed everything I said didn't did I it. wanted to be different. No. <laughs> you, you, you got that. Um, and so I think for me, then it's like, okay, like I know we can get there, right? Um, but but sometimes it's process of elimination, right? So we put you through the normal thing, which 99.9% .9 of people, like, you know, they get it. It didn't, uh, it didn't move. It didn't move. I didn't lose. I think um, I gained a pound or two. But don't I say didn't that. Lose a pound. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, but that was muscle. Probably. Well, we had to yeah. do that, but then there was medication switches. Was, yeah, we we on. switched those. So we worked. You know, we we worked a lot of it. it. Was you were a puzzle that we had to figure out. Okay, so now uh, the importance of having an accountability coach, and I'm yours, is that okay? We got this right. Like sometimes people come in, even as a physical therapist, and like they have this back pain. I'm like, okay, I know what to do. And then after four weeks, you're like, that didn't work at all, right? And that doesn't happen a lot, but then it's like, you don't be like, hey, cool, like you just got back pain. It's like, okay, I got to figure out a different avenue because I know you can heal yourself, all right? So um, we did that, but then we started launching our semi-private, our VIP program, which incorporated the, the kickboxing with the weights. That was the game changer for us. That was it. So I started doing the private sessions, I think the beginning of December, and then we started the semi-private in January. And it was literally like we flipped a switch. Um, and I don't know if it was the combination of adding the weights, um, but things finally started moving in the right direction. Which is um, hope for everybody because, again, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the people we put in our group classes, our kickbox, and they lose weight, right? We didn't, but then we upped it. We added something else, right? So what is it that you like most about um, the semi-privates and for you that you think made a difference in what happened, right? Because what's our weight now? Um, 128. Right, so, um, and you were stuck at 140 I was, for a while. I was sending you sad faces <laughs> you for definitely, months. <laughs> right, I have them all saved. It's um, not moving, it's not changing. And then again, process of elimination. Okay, let's let's try this program, right? So, so now I have, have a little bit of that roller coaster going on. So it's the up and down, and that's figuring out what that balance is. Mm -hmm. And then it's also an education part, right? Because now for for you, well, we can't go by weight anymore, right? Because we're putting on muscle. So it's my job to be the professional, be like, hey, cool, like the the weight says this, but we're really looking at the percent of body fat because the weight will will take into account the new muscles you have. And I hear now you're getting compliments on your muscles. I did. Yeah. Yes. What did, so tell them, what did you? Uh... <laughs> look at my, look at your arms and you have shoulder muscles. And, right. Yes. So pick up the bucket of ice, get your, use your muscles. And... So then let's talk about them. So now we're, we're, I know we always have goals, right? Um, two things I want to say with that. How much do you think the discipline of the martial arts helped you in your weight loss journey? I think it was tremendous part of my journey. Um, I think about the times I wanted to give up. Um, I think about the frustration. Um, I think about it. It's discouraging, especially when you are just that drive forward type of person. Um, I worked with a colleague, um, back at my very first professional job and he made a comment to me about always having a need to achieve. And about you. Yes. About me. Uh, <laughs> hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so I think that that part of it too, so that the martial artist in me wouldn't let it go. So I had to keep going and I had to keep going. And I had to keep going at the same time, the environment kept bringing me back. So that cohesive group of working with the same in, the, in our semi privates. Yeah. Semi you guys are close. Um, that same core group of people, that consistency with the training, 
um, when it was you, you knew, you knew us, you knew what we were capable of. Um, you knew when we could go have your, uh, Molly has definitely picked that up and gone with it. I mean, she has no problem telling me, um, you can use a heavier weight than that. Right. <laughs> put your, put your weight vest on. It's like um, getting personal training in a group setting. It is. And, but the cohesiveness of that group, I think we encourage each other. We inspire each other. Um, they're, we're there together. Yep. Um, and while all of our challenges and struggles might be different, we all have the same goal in mind, and that's that physical health. The, I think one of the things I didn't anticipate, I knew it would be a good program. I actually, when I created it, didn't know it'd be this good. Full transparency. But I didn't anticipate the level of closeness that the semi privates now in all the sessions have. Right. Um, I mean, you guys are outside like two and a half hours the other day talking in the parking lot after your <laughs> session. My coaches left before you guys did. They did yes. And then your session ended two hours before. Um, and that's important, right? Because you want people who know what you're going through can support you on the same journey. But now let's talk about really the most important part. The mental health changes now. Now we're not we're not that person we don't want to be. I tell people that when I have conversations with them, you know, um, the Jackie that I'm talking to right now is not the same Jackie I'm going to be talking to in six weeks or eight weeks. You're going to be a totally different person. Just trust me and my staff to get you through this. What's the difference in you now? So I'm definitely not the same person that you met back in October. Um, I will speak up now if something is not working or if I'm not feeling I think you did that in October, great. too. I probably did <laughs> not to the extent that I do not. Now I'm comfortable. I know you now, so I'm yeah. comfortable telling you. Um, but the... The difference is that I know I can. Mm -hmm. I think that that's part you got of the it, momentum. Is I know that I can do it. Um, I literally plan my day down to what time is Leo going to get out for his walk. The dog. To, yes, the dog. Um, what time is he going to get out for his walk? To what time do I have to sit down at my computer for my first meeting? And how much workout on my days that I'm not there can I get in between that time and the time that I have to start working? Um, I, I have to get it in there. I have to plan it. I have to it's make sure that it life. happens. Um, I went, did go down to, I went to five days a week instead of six days a week and automatically noticed the sluggishness, the something doesn't feel right. Or I get daring and I eat something that's not on my food list and then I pay for it for three days. So I've learned these things about myself. Um, and I've learned that what gets paid attention to gets taken care of, and I had to take care of me. Yeah, it's and I, I talk to them all the time. Um, it's about putting the oxygen mask on you first before you can put it on anybody else, right? Yes. And if there's one thing I notice about a lot of women um, is that they sacrifice their own well-being for other people, kids, parents, whatever, um, or even work, right? And um, that's fine, but if you don't take care of yourself, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? Mm -hmm. But talk to me about talk to me about the confidence though. Right, because before we weren't feeling our best. Now, th there's a confidence change, right? So I definitely don't feel my best. Like I'm not where I want to be, but I am much more comfortable now than I was previously. Um, I actually wore a two-piece bathing suit to the beach last week. Never in a million years at 51 did I think that. That's How many 51s doing. were wearing that? Probably a lot, but oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but. I actually, they didn't look as good. Though. I wasn't embarrassed right. to walk to the restroom. Um, I I felt okay about it. Right. Um, I'm more comfortable in my clothes because I'm more comfortable with myself. Um, but yeah, the confidence is definitely it changes, and I think the change in us changes how we project externally, um, and a large part of that is how we feel internally. Um, Honestly, like I was embarrassed of myself and maybe because of being in that martial arts environment and that wasn't really part of, that was never part of my life. Um, but I look at pictures of myself um, and I'm like, I don't want to be that person. That you were that when I you was, were the yeah. heaviest, right? And it becomes a lifestyle. That's, that's, that, that's the whole thing. Um, and I think part of the program, well, I know part of the program is us teaching our clients like this is what you need to do right I always tell people like uh, I'm not a construction worker right I can nail two pieces of wood together but I can't build a house I couldn't even steam this right <laughs> that's so you. that's why I needed you but when people try to lose weight on their own they weren't trained in that I went to college for eight, for eight years right 
fitness was the whole thing. Um, and even for me, it's hard to lose weight, right? Like I still have to do all the things. Once I stop tracking my calories, I went up in weight, you know? So if someone has no experience on what to do and how to lose weight, such as what fitness workouts they should do, what they should be eating, how much protein they should be getting, it's just hard to win that way, right? You need a, you need a coach. That's why Olympians have coaches, right? You could be the best tennis player, but you're off a little bit. You don't really know what's wrong. That's where the coach comes in. So what, what fears as a woman did you have coming into a studio? What fears do you think most women have when they want to lose weight? The judgment of other people and how people perceive possibly. Um, I can't say I really had a fear, um, but I've been in fitness environments um, for a long time. I've worked with personal trainers. Um, I worked with a physical therapist who was a personal trainer. I worked with um, my my Taekwondo master for years. So I don't think that it was so much for me fear um, as much as I had such a focus. Um, and it was like, okay, well, this is what we need to be doing. But people are over here doing this. <laughs> so, right. so I had to I had to readjust um, my what my perceive what I perceived should be happening um, within a gym, but not necessarily a fear. Um, being new to the state, being new to Rhode Island, um, my time in Rhode Island had been during COVID. Um, welcome to your new life, and the right. whole world just shut down. So for me, it was not knowing people um, and never anticipating that. I'd have that amazing group that I have now. And what's the benefit of actually becoming like really friends with the people you're working out with, especially from a new state? You didn't know anybody. I didn't know. And now you have like instant friends. Right? <laughs> so the one of the greatest things about it is that, especially all women, is that we can encourage each other. And maybe we haven't been exactly where the other one is, but we've experienced something similar. And so it's more comfortable having those conversations or sharing those before photos sure i mean you're the only man i know that asked me how much i weigh <laughs> i get away with a lot and yeah right it must be the so, smile uh, but it is it's just it's having those relationships and those bonds um i didn't anticipate that i thought i would come i would do my and then you leave thing, me and then i would be yeah. gone and i would come back and i'd do my workout and i'd leave i never anticipated the connection because it's a social event too right it's a workout it's a social event um you're, you're becoming friends with these people. You want to see them succeed, but yes. then I want to succeed too, right? So it motivates you. Um, so what's next for you? So what are our goals? So um, I still have not had my weight loss goal. Which um, is what? We'll just put it out 125 there. 125. 125. Is my... my. And how tall are we? Uh, about 4 foot 11. Okay. So, but once I hit that goal... Then what happens next? I have to reset it. <laughs> yes, so <this> is true. <laughs> Just don't go lower. <laughs> That is, that's not like, that's not it. Um, I, d I feel stronger, um, as we talked about, more confident. Um, but so for me, it's continuing. Uh, I love being here. I love the, the group of people that I've connected with um, and continuing. I did do a 530 um, regular class this morning. I haven't done that since January. 5 30 in the morning yeah. 5 30 in the morning um no i haven't done the large group class since January. okay yes yes so um i might do that occasionally but semi-private the group is that is where it is for me and to continue learning and working on my form making sure that i'm punching correctly that i'm kicking correctly um if i can inspire and help others along the way i would love to do that are people coming up to you now and asking you how you did it they are um, I have more people that say, and they did see the beginning. So people that didn't know me when I arrived um, here and then people who know me now that say, wow, you look great. Or what are you, what are you doing? Wow. You look, you look great. And so that is different. And so people normally in public don't approach you in that way. So that's part of that connection here is we're comfortable saying those things to each other or noting the changes in each other that people might not necessarily um, volunteer on the street. So, <laughs> right. True, true, true. Um, so then as a woman, what would you tell, uh, another woman who wants to lose weight, uh, but they don't know what the first step should be? You need to find somebody who does. 
So I thought that I knew I'm working with personal trainers, being a martial artist. I thought I could do it on my own. Um, it wasn't working and I needed to connect with you in the, in this case to get me going in the right direction. So I thought I ate healthy until you had me put everything in that app. And right. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> right. How many calories is in that? Um, so while I might've been eating the right foods, I was probably eating way too much of them doing a lot of stress eating. So that personal coach, that accountability, having someone who's focused on you and what your goals are. And many times the changes that you need to make in order to get there. And people can't, you can't see that. Um, so often the saying, and I, I go through this a lot professionally, I can't get out of my own way today. When it comes to weight loss, you can't get out of your own way. You need someone who knows someone who's educated, somebody who's trained, and someone who's going to write out the map. Now, whether you follow the map right. is a completely different story, but the the accountability, the person's sharing that knowledge and information. So the same thing won't work for everybody. I'm proof. truly proof, <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly proof of that. But the same philosophy probably can you can relate to 99.9% .9 of the people but yeah. it's it's the dedication too so if you get that person who you know this is what I want to do they'll keep they'll stick with it and keep keep going but again it's that connection so what if I stayed and continued not losing a pound maybe gaining a few um, not seeing the changes and results that I wanted had it not been my confidence and your skills and, and your ability and the fact that you went totally out of your way and above and beyond to get me information that started leading me down the right path. I wouldn't, I would have been like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't do what, what I thought I was going to do when I got there. Look, what else am I going to try? But yeah, right. And, and so this is the thing, like when I have people talk to me, um, they're like, Hey, so like I did like eight other programs, they sound similar to yours. And then I have to be like, hey, cool, Jackie. So was I running those programs? <laughs> no. Okay. So let's just agree they're different programs, right? Because I nothing bad about those. But I don't know what they were, right? And um, like I talked to somebody today and I was like, oh, so did you have like accountability? Like, yeah. Okay. Did they talk to you when you were out of the studio? Well, no, not really. Well, that's not the same level of accountability because we have an app where, you know, we talk every day practically. Right. Oh, like yes. through the app multiple yes. times a day, multiple usually. Times a day. Um, but sometimes you need that person in your corner who, again, is going to instill confidence like, yes, Jackie, we will figure this out, whether that's in the healthcare industry, whether that's weight loss, whatever. We got this. Let's just stay on the course and we can course correct on the way. Right. And the same goes for, I mean, being the advocate for your healthcare, you need to be an advocate for your your fitness as well. So on the accountability portion of it, someone just saying, it's okay, it'll get better tomorrow. Like for me, that doesn't work. And you know that, and you know me, so you know that, okay, you're not where you want to be. Let's look at your protein and increase that, um, you know, or add a re workout. reduce the carbs, add a workout, add a weighted vest. Like, you know, because you work directly with each individual, what could possibly make a difference. And in many cases, such as mine, it did make a difference. And you look fabulous, by the way. Thank you. Um, what, what, this is my last question, because I want to end on this. What would you today want to tell yourself right before you started this journey, right when you're at your worst point? The Jackie of today, what would you want to tell that Jackie? The journey would be worth it. And it's not over. No, it's not. It's just the beginning. Yes. <laughs> That's great. A true, like a true black belt, you definitely yes. said it. Um, so... Again, I know from for me, you've been probably the top consistent client I've ever had, um, which is why you got the results you had. And I know that you inspire me and you inspire other people in uh, the semi-private. So I just want to say from all of us here, we're proud of you. Uh, and we're, we're definitely excited to see the future of Jackie um, and then how you are going to inspire other people based on your story. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.